Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. This is my four hour bulky pocket scarf and it is just gorgeous. It's super warm and it's really fast because we're working with bulky yarn. So I'm going to set him aside for a minute because it's so big it doesn't fit on my workstation. But I'll leave right there those gorgeous colors. So what we're going to start with is I used four skeins of Hometown USA by Lion Brand and this one is a I think it's Houston. Yep, Houston cream. It's a really nice winter white. I used four skeins of this. Four. And and two skeins of this one is the Woolies Thick and Quick. Which color are you? Hudson Bay. It looks like this. It's a nice contrast to this. That part was for the pockets. And the Houston Cream is for the scarf part. And it is really, really quick and easy. So right now I'm going to show you how we do this part right in here. Show you how you do, how we start, what's in the middle, and how we end. I'm not going to make the whole scarf. I'm just going to show you the basic idea. And you just make it four skeins long, or three and a half, I guess. I used, I still have this much left, so it's about three and a half. Okay. On our 10 millimeter hook, this one is a chain of 20 all the way across, right here, all the way across, chain 20. I am just going to chain a few so I can give you the idea of how it works. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just go ten. There's a chain of ten. Now we're going to single crochet in those back bumps all the way back down, starting in the first little bump. So we'll end up with nine single crochets down the back right here. This takes a little bit more time but it makes a really nice finished edge and you're going to want that edge. So there's one. So working into these back bumps takes a little bit more time just to make sure that you get just this back bump and not the other two, but it is worth it. It is worth the extra few seconds that it will take for you to do that. So it makes the edge look just as nice as the last edge. Beginning edge doesn't always look as pretty when you just work into the chain. Alright, here's our last one. I go in the back bump. There we go. Alright, so there's one row of single crochet. We're going to make four more that look just like it for this pattern. I'll just make one more. So there's a, there's a chain one. Turn your work and do nine more single crochets. Very simple, very basic. Nothing fancy going on here, just regular old single crochets all the way down. Seven, eight, and nine. There you go. Now again, for this pattern, there would be five total. The first one, this is the second one, then I would do three more, so we'd have five rows of single crochet total. I'm not going to do any more. I'm going to show you what I do with this next part. Okay, this is the end of your single crochet. It only goes to about here. This makes a nice base at the bottom of your pocket. Now we're going to work on this part right here. 
which is very simple. Not much harder than the single crochet part. Just this part right in here. These are all double crochets. And the way that I do my double crochet is I chain one. I do not consider my chain a stitch. I don't do that. No, no, no. I don't like it that way. I think it leaves too many gaps, especially when you're working with something this as large of a project. So in our very first stitch right here, we're going to yarn over and double crochet. You can mark that stitch if you want. I'm going to mark it so I can show you why I do what I do with the chain one instead of the chain two or three. So there was my first double crochet. I'm just going to do that all the way across. Again, it's easy peasy. These are not complicated stitches, no secrets here. This is really easy. There you go. There's my, there's my first row of double crochet. And you can see the difference. Way bigger stitches than they were down here. Now again, when I want the tight stitches, when I want everything close, and everything, every stitch is being used, I'm not skipping anything, I like to do this. Just the chain one, and turn, and double crochet right in here. No skipping, right here. So we're going to double crochet into that very first stitch. And you see, now the way that I did this, I'm going to take my stitch marker out, but the way that I do this, there's a real stitch there for you to stitch to place your double crochet at the very end instead of having to work into the chain. That works very nicely when all my stitches are so close together and we're using every stitch and we're not doing any skips. I just like it. I like how it looks better. It doesn't leave a big gap. So there you go. Now we would do that double crochet. I just did two. For this pattern right here we need ten. So there were four single crochets 10 rows of double crochet. Now we're on to this little mesh part. Again, really, really easy. Now since we do want to have a skip and a gap right here for our mesh, I'm going to break my little rule of just the chain one because I use the chain ones when I am making sure I use every stitch along the way and I don't have any extra gaps over here on the side. But when I do want a gap, I'm going to chain one, two, three, and four at the very beginning. Chaining four, and I'm going to skip this first stitch and the second stitch and go over here with my double crochet. This is when I do use my chain four as a stitch. So I chain three of the chains are, are the double crochet and the last chain, the chain number four, is actually skipping over this one. Now we want to chain one, skip, double crochet. Chain one, skip, double crochet. Chain one, skip, and there's our last stitch, is a double crochet into this very last stitch. Now it's got a little mesh look to it. That's awesome. There we go. Do the same thing again. Chain one, two, three, and four. And now it's easy. We don't have to do anything except double crochet into the top of the other cro double crochet. We don't have to do any counting. Just chain four. That's a double crochet right here with the first three chains and a skip for here. Double crochet into the top of this one. 
and a chain one to skip this spot. Double crochet in the top of the other post and a chain one. Double crochet into the top of that post. Alright, so there's our third one. We're going to chain one. But this time we do have to work into the chain. So we're going to make sure that you work into, you just skip one, or work into and under, work under, I'm sorry, work into this chain under two pieces. So under the back loop and that, the, the uh, back bump and this back loop. So we're going to work under both of those with a double crochet. And that's how we're going to end that row. There you go. Show you that one more time. Chain one, two, three, and four. And we're going to double crochet at the top of this post right here. And a chain one. Double crochet at the top of the post. And a chain one double crochet and a chain one and then again we want to work into this chain underneath two loops. There's the back loop and there's that back bump with a double crochet. So there you go. That is the lash part right here. And this is exactly right. You want to do three of these. I just did three right here. So this was three, three rows, and this is three rows. The next part, we just did the mesh right here. And now we're going to do this part. That's three rows of double crochet. But that's when we're back to my preferred way is a single crochet only and a double crochet into here right here, the very first one. And now we're going to double crochet into this chain space. So there's number two. Double crochet into the top of this post. And in this chain space. At the top of the post. And in this chain space, top of the post, and in the chain space, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh oh, we need nine. Now we need to go and do the same thing into this third chain right here under the two loops, the back loop and the back bump. Double crochet. There. That's this line right here. There's one. Show you that again. It's a chain one only. Yarn over and a double crochet in that very first space. Or the very, I'm sorry, the very first stitch and all the way across. This pattern is so amazingly easy peasy. And there's our last stitch, which is a real stitch. I like it. There's our second row of double crochet. Do that one more time. Chain one and a double crochet into this very first stitch right here. So that's a yarn over. See? And double crochet all the way down. In my swatch I'm doing, it's nine. But in the real scarf, it would be 19. 
You can really start the scarf with any even number because after you do your first row of single crochets, you're going to lose one of those chains and you'll be working with odd numbers all throughout. So any chain of even numbers. And there's our very last one. So now we have the mesh right here and three rows of double crochet, which is exactly the same thing that's in my pattern. So three rows of mesh, three rows of double crochet, and then keep alternating three rows of mesh, three rows of double crochet, three rows of mesh, three double, three rows of double crochet, all the way through. I'll show you the mesh one more time. So since we're doing the mesh part, we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and turn our work. Skip the first stitch because these first three chains equal your double crochet. The fourth one is a chain to skip this stitch, so we're going to double crochet into that stitch. And a chain one, a skip, and a double crochet, and a chain one, a skip and a double crochet, a chain one, a skip, and there's our last stitch, double crochet. So again, all the way along, and just keep alternating back and forth until your scarf is however long you want it to be, or until you've used, oh, three or so of the skeins of your Hudson. Probably going to use a little bit more than three. You want to make every make sure everything is even along the way. So when you end, before you get back to the pocket, so you go double crochet, mesh, double crochet, mesh, double crochet, mesh. You want to end with a double crochet with a set of three double crochets. Now we'll go back to the pocket again. The back side of the pocket. I'm going to take this out really quick so I can show you easier. So now when we get down to here, we're going to have three double crochet rows, which is what I have right here. And we're going to do ten more, just like it. That's why I took out those that mesh part there, because I didn't need that right now. So there's three is the ending part. And then there's ten more, just like we did at the beginning. So ten more rows of double crochet. So technically this little area right here will be thirteen. Right in here. This will be thirteen rows. And then the last five rows, of course, what we started with was five single crochets. Five rows of single crochet. So again, that's just a chain and a turn and single crochet all the way across. And you do that for five rows, just like we did at the very beginning. Boom! There you go. Now at this point, you have two options. You can fasten off right here. Totally be done. Fasten off the white part of the scarf, or if you wish to make a nice edge, you can do any border that you wish all the way around, all the way around the entire scarf, the perimeter of the entire scarf, or you can finish off right now. So then it would look like this with no pockets. Now I'll show you what the pockets were. In the pocket, you thought that was simple, the pockets are easy peasy. They're very, very easy. There's nothing to them. Those are the pockets. This is a great color. I just love this one. What was it again? I know it was Lion Brand Willie's Thick and Quick, but Hudson Bay. I always forget the name of this one, but I recognize it every time I see it. I just love it. Now to make the pocket right here, I used one skein 
of my Hudson Bay Lion Brand Woolies Quick Thick and Quick. One skein of each. Still had some left over. One skein of each. And this is a just a square. It is chain 25. Single crochet back down that chain of 24. 12 rows of double crochet. All the way up here. I'll go this way. So again, that was a chain. 25 single crochet back down the chain of 24 double crochet 1 2 3 4 all the way up 12 rows of double crochet and the very last one row up here is a single crochet you're going to put your pockets together one pocket on either end of course on either end of the scarf. And just do a single crochet or a slip stitch, whatever you wish, all the way around, going through both pieces, and leave this open, of course. So, I'm going to do that all the way around. Oopsie. I'm dropping my scarf. So lay the pocket right here on top of the back. That's why we made this so solid so we actually have a pocket that doesn't have a bunch of giant holes in it. So we're going to go all the way around with a single crochet or a slip stitch, whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Make sure it's secure and then you're going to turn it inside. That'll hide that edge don't have to make it a perfect edge that way. It's just going to hide your edge because this is big and bulky. It's very forgiving. Then my last little detail, I had two great buttons. They're just huge and they were just fun and they matched in here really nicely because they're super dark and there's a nice dark brown in here. And then these have enough space in between the double crochets and there's enough give that you just button it like that. And now you have a monster pocket. It's huge. It can fit my iPad in this pocket. Let me do the other side just like it. It's so great. Put it around my neck. So that's really all there is to it. It took me about four hours from start to finish. So if you want to have a really fun, bulky pocket scarf and you don't want to work on it till spring, you want to actually use it this year, you could get this one done in an afternoon. You're just hanging out watching a couple movies, doing whatever, because the stitches are so simple. Huge pockets, nice and long. I have a picture for you in a minute. And there's nothing here except double crochets and single crochets. Isn't that crazy? And it looks so, so fancy, but it's not. It's really, really easy. So you'll be able to do that at any time. This is easy for a beginner. If you want to make Christmas presents or any type of gift, this can go really fast. You could make up in a weekend, you could probably make several of these and get a nice chunk of your Christmas shopping done. So there again, uh, I'm Beth with Thimble Hooks. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel so I can keep making really cool things like this and sharing it with you all. And have a great day. I'm going to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. There we go.